Good morning, church. Ah, what a glorious day. Praise the Lord. church yay it's good to be in god's house we are so pleased that you're here with us today whether you are uh, here in our physical space or joining us online we are glad that you are here today uh, just want to remind you that if you are new to us or you have any new information if you would fill out one of the connection cards in the pew back in front of you so that you we could have that just stick it in the offering plate and it'll make it to us those of you on facebook you can check in and show your friends where you spend your time uh, on uh, Sunday mornings. Uh, we begin our worship service together with the litany that is found uh, up on your screen. This new day is fresh with possibility to encounter the living Christ. With bright eyes, let us search. 
This new day is fresh with possibility to understand the living Christ. With your days, Christ, let us honor. This new day is fresh with possibility to be moved by the living Christ. With compassion, this new day is fresh with possibility to respond to the living Christ. This new day is fresh with possibility to serve the living Christ. With humble intention, let us act. This new day is fresh with possibility to praise the living Christ. With strong voices, let us worship. We'll continue in song. You are holy. You are holy. together in the Gloria Day Statement of Faith found on your screens. We believe that the way we treat one another is the fullest expression of how we live out our faith. We find our approach to God through the life and teachings of Jesus Christ, who is our model for living. And we recognize the faithfulness of other paths, which may also lead people to an experience of God. We stand in God's grace 
and we live that grace in our attitudes and actions toward one another. We understand the church as a community of people who together make up the body of Christ. As we strive to serve the spiritual, emotional, and physical needs of others, we are inclusive as Christ was and welcome all people seeking a closer relationship with God. That the questions are as important as the answers, that living the mystery is a more sacred position than church tradition and doctrine, and we strive to love all, serve all, in Jesus' name, as we proclaim our mystery of faith, that Christ died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. I invite the congregation to sit down, except for the children. Children, come on up for our children's time. Good morning. Good morning. So how are you all? Good. Okay. We, we're having a sunny morning. This is the first sunny Sunday morning since, I don't know, maybe September. September. Yeah, it, it, it really seems that way, huh? Well, we have a wonderful day, and I'm going to teach you not only... A new song, but the motions to the song. Okay? So I need everyone to look at me, and I need you to have your, your hands and arms ready, okay? So we're going to start out. Um, I'm going to teach you the motions first. So it starts out like this. And what do you think this, the word for this is going to be? God. God. Or Lord. So, and then, here, yes, listen, good. Pray, pray, yeah. And then, what's this again? Lord, Lord or God. And then we'll come down. So like, send, send, and then God's spirit like a wind. God's spirit like a wind. Right here. Right here. In this place. Yeah. Okay. God. Lord. Listen. Here. And then send. Love. Oh, this next one is going to get you. Strong power. And then grace, grace. Just a really soft touch. Okay. Lord, listen to your children praying. So let's put that together. Lord, listen to your children praying. Lord, Send your spirit in this place. So let's try that all together, okay? Because that's a lot. Lord, listen to your children praying. Lord, send your spirit in this place. And then we're going to do the first one again. Lord, Listen to your children praying. Send us love. Send us power. Send us grace. Can we do that all together? Okay. Lord, listen to your children praying. Lord, send your spirit in this place. Lord, listen to your children 
praying. Send us love, send us power, send us grace. Why don't we all stand up and we'll see if they have figured it out too, okay? All right. So the pressure is on. You too, band. Okay. Lord, listen to your children praying. Lord, send your spirit in this place. Lord, listen to your children praying. Send us love, send us power, send us grace. Thank you, thank you. Now children, I would like for you to stay here because Dana Harrison, our children and family director, has a special presentation to make. And also to, my mom. And, your, and she is your mom also. <laughs> She has a special presentation to make today. Okay. Mm, you have to turn it on. Hello? Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Today's our last Sunday school for the year. And I just wanted to take a moment to thank my wonderful Sunday school teachers. The greatest gift you can give us is your time, and you certainly did that for our children. So um, when you hear your name, I just wanted you to come up, and with the help of my little friends, if you can all grab a plant. When the teachers come up, you can hand them a plant. And Sean, you're going to give out their certificates? Yeah, okay. I'm going to be hanging out certificates. All right. <laughs> you might have to share one, guys. Yeah. Yeah, you might have to share. Thanks, Sean. All right, our first teacher is Miss Nancy Staber. <laughs> Thank you, Nancy. Nance, next is, sure, stay up for a picture. Miss Nolene. <laughs> She here? Miss Nolene's not here? Okay. Miss, Mrs. Joanne Simon. She just went back to, okay. Sean, you can put that down still. I know. Nancy Griffith. Arlene. Miss Arlene. Miss Arlene. Brenda Crowley. <laughs> Susie Tremel. Patricia Hahnemann. And, 
and Bette Toomer. Thank you, ladies. You don't know how much you mean to me and the children. Thank you so much, and I hope you all come back next year. <laughs> Thank you. two scriptures this morning, and uh, usually we would uh, read the gospel last, but today uh, I'm reading the gospel first. This is uh, very soon after Jesus' last supper with his disciples from the gospel of John chapter 13, starting at verse 31. When Judas Iscariot had gone out, Jesus said, now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me. And I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, 
Everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Our next reading is from the book of the Acts of the Apostles. And this was after Peter's uh, amazing vision where uh, God's Spirit came upon Gentiles and he baptized them. This is after he goes back to Jerusalem and he has to answer the rest of the leaders of the early church who were upset because they thought that Jesus had come only to the circumcised, that is, those who followed all of the Jewish laws. And this is the, the account. Now the apostles and the believers who were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also accepted the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticized him, saying, why did you go to uncircumcised men and eat with them? Then Peter began to explain it to them, step by step, saying, I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision. There was something like a large sheet coming down from heaven, being lowered by its four corners, and it came close to me. As I looked at it closely, I saw four-footed animals, beasts of prey, reptiles, and birds of the air. I also heard a voice saying to me, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. But I replied, By no means, Lord, for nothing profane or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But a second time the voice answered from heaven, What God has made clean you must not call profane. This happened three times. Then everything was pulled up again to heaven. At that very moment, three men sent to me from Caesarea arrived at the house where we were. The Spirit told me to go with them and not to make a distinction between them and us. These six brothers also accompanied me, and we entered the man's house. He told us how he had seen an, the angel standing in his house and saying, Send to Joppa and bring Simon, who is called Peter. He will give you a message by which your entire household will be saved. And as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them, just as it had upon us at the beginning. And I remembered the word of the Lord, how Jesus had said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If God then gave them the same gift that he gave us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could hinder God? When they had heard this, they were silenced. And they praised God, saying, Then God has given, even to the Gentiles, the repentance that leads to life. Here ends the readings. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. I'm beginning to say my goodbyes. A few weeks ago, the week before Easter, it's a tradition in this synod to have a special service for all of the pastors and deacons where we renew the vows that we made to God and to the church at our ordination or consecration. And the bishop renews her vows, too, at that service. It's always very meaningful, and especially to do it during Holy Week. I knew it would be my last time to see 
my colleagues that I've grown to love. And I knew it would be my last time to see my colleagues whom I have found pretty irritating over the years. Um, especially that one pastor who has to sing more loudly than the 20 people closest to him and also pray more loudly. But I found that on that day, I had a lot of positive regard even for him. Two weeks ago was my last Synod Assembly here. I had been looking forward to saying goodbyes to colleagues and lay people from the eight other congregations I've served in this synod and other folks whom I've come to know and love over the 11 years that I've been here. Now, a lot of you know that I've been lifting a lot of boxes lately and um, probably overdoing it. So Saturday morning of Synod Assembly, I woke up unable to move because of all the pain in my right shoulder. I took to a leave, but it barely made a dent. But I thought, I'm going to go to Synod anyway. I stayed until after the worship service, but I couldn't bear it anymore. But after the communion, they were having prayer, private prayer, healing prayer. And so I went to one of the prayer stations, not the one that was closest to where we were sitting, but I went to one a little farther away where my dear friend Gwen was the prayer. And as Gwen was praying for me, I started crying. It was my first time crying, the first time that I'd allowed myself to grieve. about this move to Texas. Needed that cry. The goodbyes have been coming more frequently. Now, don't freak out. I'm going to be here. My last Sunday here is June 23rd. So, but this week I had two synod meetings, and at the end of each, the, my colleagues there gathered around me laid their hands on me and prayed for me. And I cried again. At another meeting, one of my dear colleagues sang a blessing to me. And then he told me a story about plants. How when you transplant a plant, you dig it up. And as you dig it up, you, some of the roots of that plant are left in the hole. But the plant takes up the soil, still holds on to the soil that was in that hole. And when it is moved and then planted in another hole, it carries the soil from that other place. In the new place, it can have fresh soil put on it, be freshly watered, but very likely, no matter how well that plant is tended, it will suffer root shock to some extent. Maybe it'll wilt a little bit or a lot. Maybe it'll take a while to recover. I knew he was talking about how I would be experiencing pain as well as the joys of being with family. And I cried again. Saying goodbye is an emotional time. In today's gospel, Jesus is beginning to say goodbye. This is after his Last Supper and before the terrible events that would lead to his crucifixion. But Jesus takes the time here, two chapters worth in John's Gospel, to give farewell instructions. 
Scholars call this part of John's Gospel, Jesus' farewell discourse. He's getting his disciples ready to go on without him, giving instructions to them and to us as well. I like to imagine how irritated Jesus could be with his disciples, how exasperated he could be with them. In a couple of places, Jesus says to them, you of little faith. Remember that? Oh, yeah. But here, Jesus says to them, little children. He is overlooking their irritating habits, all of the annoyances, and just feeling the love for them. Little children, a term of endearment. And he gives these disciples the command to love. Love one another as I have loved you. So, how has Jesus loved? Well, I will say that Jesus loved by telling the truth. Even when the truth was shocking or blasphemous, When Jesus met Nathanael, he described him as someone without falsehood. Nathanael was astonished that Jesus knew him because he'd never met him. At the well in Samaria, Jesus told the outcast woman the truth of her life, the truth which made her ashamed and he offered her the water of life to drink. Later, Jesus told Peter that Peter would deny him three times, and Peter protested, I'm not going to do that. But we know he did. Jesus loved by telling the truth. Jesus loved also by being faithful to the word of God. When the crowd was about to execute the woman who was caught in adultery, Jesus stopped them, asked them if any of them were without sin, if any of them could stand in the place of God, if any of them were equal to God. And they knew they couldn't. He called them to the truth that God is God, and we are not. Jesus loved by continuing to care for those who responded negatively to what he had to say. Nicodemus was confused by Jesus' teaching. The young man wanted to know what he could do to inherit eternal life, and Jesus said, Sell all you have and follow me. And as the young man turned away, unwilling to let go of his wealth, we read in the Gospels, Jesus loved him, even as he said no to Jesus. We who are Jesus' followers love by doing the same as Jesus telling the truth, being faithful to the word of God, continuing to act and to care for those who don't respond, for those who are irritating. Here's another important bit. The whole history of God in scripture and in the lives of believers is that God is continually expanding not just the how of love, but the who of love. So the who is not limited to one another. Our fellow ministers or our fellow church members or our fellow Christians. We hear that clearly in this reading from Acts. 
Here, Peter explains the new truth that he came to, that the love of God in Christ is not just for Jews, but for everyone, even Gentiles. Peter explained how God's Spirit led him step by step toward that new truth. Eventually, the rest of the believers came to that same understanding that God's Spirit could touch even those who were beyond hope, those who were religious enemies. God was doing something new, being open to people they weren't open to. Jesus showed many times in the Gospels love for outsiders. And here in Acts, Peter experienced it in a very dramatic way. Those other leaders in the early church couldn't get to that conclusion without Peter explaining step by step how God had worked in a vision to him, in a vision to Cornelius, the Gentile Roman soldier. God's truth is revealed in stages. Think of those disciples of Jesus, the ones to whom he is saying his goodbyes. If he had called them and then gone directly to the crucifixion and resurrection, they wouldn't have gotten it. They wouldn't have understood it. They needed to go with him step by step along the three years' journey of his ministry, step by step witnessing Jesus speaking truth in love, witnessing him calling people to God's word, God's word of hope, caring for people, even who turned their backs on him. That was how they understood how to love. Step by step is how God leads us today. Step by step is how God encourages us to show love to all. God's truth is revealed in stages. When I started ministry among you here in October, I had no idea that in June I would be going to Texas. I thought, oh, maybe by next October, Gloria Day will have called a new pastor and I'll go on to some other congregation in this synod. Many of you have heard my story of how step by step God showed me that God wanted me to be in Texas. Four years ago, God's Spirit revealed to you here at Gloria Day that you should start a meal, not just for one another, but for many more people in the community. You know how that happened, those of you who were there then. You know how it happened. I imagine it was step by step that you came to that realization. But it has been a blessing to so many over these four years. I am convinced that God's Spirit will continue to show up in my life, in my life, in your lives, in the life of Gloria Day. God's Spirit will be here as you discern the next steps for Gloria Day. God will provide God's Spirit for God's people. To paraphrase Peter's rhetorical question to his accusers, who are we that we could hinder God? And I will say we cannot hinder God. 
God's will will be done. And God will be with us every step to lead us to new ways of showing God's love. Amen. come to that time in our service where we share our joys and our concerns together, I want to uh, uh, go ahead and lift up two for our community. Uh, one is um, the family of Doug Lempster, his wife, uh, Crystal is here. Uh, Christine, I'm sorry, my mind is just blanking on Cynthia it. Russell. Uh, Cynthia Russell, I'm sorry. Um, and we want to lift up his extended family, your family, all of you who grieve, uh, and keep you all in our thoughts and prayers. Uh, also, Sandy Rosenthal passed away. Uh, Sandy and uh, Sally have been coming to the 5 o'clock service for decades, uh, and uh, his service is tomorrow night uh, in the chapel. Are there other joys and concerns that you want to lift up today? Definitely, yeah. Other joys and concerns? Yes, Amy? Oh, wow, that's so cool. So uh, one of the rituals or one of those pieces uh, of liturgy that was done in the women's club, uh, she got her, uh, uh, the thing that she wished on that piece of paper has come true. That's awesome. Yeah, that's wonderful. Any other joys and concerns? Yeah, Nancy. Oh, yeah, Brody was b uh, born yesterday, the Donahue's uh, newest uh, uh, grandson. Uh, this is Tommy's little brother. Uh, and so uh, those of you who know Tommy and uh, Lynn, uh, do we have a joy or concern Brody, back here? Uh, Oh yeah, yeah. My uh, my Facebook feed has just blown up with all the graduations, and uh, I think we're on card seven or nine. I can't remember of uh, graduation cards going out. So if you have a graduate from kindergarten, preschool, all the way up to graduate school, uh, know that uh, they are in our thoughts and prayers, and so are you as they work through these transitions and go on to what's next in their life. Other joys and concerns. And let us pray. Holy and gracious God, on this day we come to you and we ask especially prayers for Cynthia, for Sally, for all of those who mourn. We ask, O oh God, for comfort and peace. Holy God, for all of those for whom illness is still a part of their lives, may you offer them your perseverance and strength. Holy God, where some have received news or joyous events, celebrate with them. Let them know their joy is your joy. Holy God, as we move into this week, as we move towards another holiday season of travel, be with those who travel. Be with those who have been lost in wars or conflict and those who love them. Gracious God, be with this community of faith as we continue to discern what's next. We thank you, O oh God, for your presence, for the ways that you are with us always, for the opportunity to serve you, and for everyone who comes in our doors, from preschool kids to Al-Anon and Debtors Anonymous groups to our Tuesday night meal people, to the families who come and use the activities done by our uh, Growth Opportunity Center here, for the families who've been blessed with beds through OHAT. God, you have blessed us so much to be a blessing to others. Help us to continue that in the ways that your son taught us to love one another. He also taught us a prayer that binds us together with all who say this prayer this day. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now with the ushers, please come forward for this morning's offering. Take my life, let it be all for you. Take my life and let it be all for you. You brought me this far. So why would I question you now? You have provided. Why would I start to doubt? Ever been stranded, abandoned, or left here to fight alone? I'm giving you control. Stacey Reed and Chris Frank to come forward in just a moment. They're going to have a couple of announcements. If you'll turn to the back page of your bulletin, you can see some of the things that are coming up. Uh, and uh, we just wanted you to know about them. Uh, one of the things that uh, we want you to be aware of is there's two sort of volunteer opportunities 
uh, that we've got around here. One uh, is around sacred grounds. If you're someone who enjoys having uh, coffee and donuts, maybe uh, once a week or no, not once a week, once a month or once every little bit, you might be willing to uh, volunteer in sacred grounds. If you're willing to do that, let Pam Cops know in the office. Stacey, you've got an announcement for us. It's a little sneak attack. Uh, <laughs> so uh, June 1st is our flea market, our annual flea market, which has kind of come out of nowhere. It seems like so fast it's here. Um, so we would love for all of you, any of you, to be able to maybe clean out your garages and your basements this weekend coming up. Um, all of the, anything you can bring us, like um, bikes, kids' toys. Um, we're not accepting, I think, televisions and some of those older electronics um, or clothing. So, hmm? Yeah, no washers. Please don't bring any washers. <laughs> Small furniture, manageable things, um, books, kitchen, housewares, all that kind of stuff. Um, but we can't be dropping off until Wednesday morning, if I'm correct on that, because we're voting here on Tuesday. So the uh, garden room is not going to be open until Wednesday morning. So um, anything you want to bring over, tell your friends, your neighbors, whomever, to bring some things if you can. And if you are available to help, that would be awesome. As far as uh, organizing at night or during the day, the tables will be set up, and then we sort of have to categorize everything. I'll be here every evening um, to help with that. But if you have any free time um, and you can you know, give a little bit of time to that, that would be great. And the flea market starts at, I think, 8 o'clock on Saturday morning. It's 8 to 1. So if anybody's interested in helping with parking, helping in the kitchen, or helping to sell, um, we would appreciate that too. Our youth group is, our crew is pretty small right now. So um, anybody who is willing to give a little bit of time, if you can, that would be great. So um, bring your things, and we're going to sell them. Support the troops. All right. All right. The kids' troops. So you can support you can support the youth group by coming and buying stuff. But on top of that, guess what? You can support the youth group by buying some more stuff that you could bring back next year. <laughs> yeah. We're just going to recycle, reuse, right? This is a good thing. Uh, but please help out. Chris? Um, and to add on to the mission trip, we are selling, um, not selling, um, our envelope campaign has started, um, so you can make a donation. Um, there's little envelopes and they say how much each one is worth. You'll be able to donate as much as you'd like, but um, please donate. We, we really need the help uh, this year. It's a little, it's a little tight, but um, anything helps, so thank you. All right, thank you. Gracias. Thanks. So uh, community meal, if you're willing or able to help with a community meal uh, during the month of June uh, by giving a Thrive in Action card, by participating and helping to celebrate that fourth anniversary, uh, we're still figuring out maybe something else that we can do to celebrate. But it's an amazing ministry, as you see in your bulletin. In four years, we've served over 9,000 meals, uh, which is an amazing thing. And so uh, that's a great ministry. Yep, thank you. I will let you know uh, two things that are not in here. One, the hospitality team is meeting right after worship in uh, the, uh, the fishbowl room, which is off the library lounge, uh, and uh, to talk about some hospitality events coming up. Uh, and we're thinking about a sermon series around your questions of faith. Do you have questions about God? Do you have questions about our statement of faith? Do you have questions about, uh, you know, anything that you've ever heard about? I've already been asked to talk about the Holy Spirit uh, and a couple of other things. So if you have those ideas, just send them to me by email. I'm not going to say that I have the definitive answer, but we're going to look at some possible answers. Uh, so that'll be fun this summer. Uh, any other announcements that you have today? Yeah, if you're interested, if you uh, are interested or able to do online giving, uh, Rick Graber is downstairs in the Christian Fellowship Hall. Uh, I know that sometimes you forget your checkbook or you don't, you know, you don't think about when you might give if you're gone for a while. Online giving allows you to just set it up so that it comes out automatically. Uh, you don't have to think about it, although maybe you could pray about it the first of the month. Uh, but uh, to do that as seamlessly as possible. And some folks have let us know they don't know how to set that up. So Rick Graver is going to help you set it up uh, confidentially downstairs uh, in Christian Fellowship Hall. It lets the church know what kind of funds we can expect each month automatically, but it also lets you uh, sort of know that, that your giving is safe and secure uh, through online giving. And we, uh, we would love if uh, some of you are able to do that. Uh, so I believe that's all the announcements. So let's finish up with our sending song. Please stand. Oh, this is a get up congregation.
Congregation participation. the light of God's love, so that all may know it and feel it. Amen. <laughs> 